Hey everybody, welcome back. So this is the Iron Man Mark III build series. And as I did in the previous video, I gave you a little tour of the printers I'll be using. And the first video was all about the project in general. As we're getting closer to the time where we're gonna start manipulating files and get printing, I wanted to cover some of the safety aspects. This is a seriously a big project, a lot of printing, a lot of materials, a lot of energy. You wanna cover safety. I know no one really wants to talk about safety, but it's very, very important. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the use of enclosures, fire safety devices, and air filtration. Are you ready? Here we go. Welcome back. Well, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Paul. This is my channel where nerdy is cool. Big into 3D printing, obviously. I've, I've also done some other big projects, R2D2, Stormtroopers, other stuff. So there is that. If you have never seen my stuff before, but you're interested, feel free to hit the subscribe button down below. I would love to have you become a subscriber and I wouldn't be offended if you gave me a like. I'll wait. Thank you. Okay, so moving on. So this is an important topic. This is something that I've wanted to cover for a while. Now, doing an Iron Man project or any big project where you're gonna use a lot of filament, you're gonna use a lot of electricity, and probably using a lot of printers, safety is a big aspect of all of this. Now, first, let's start with the enclosures. So why do you need an enclosure? An enclosure is gonna give you better 3D prints because you're controlling the environment that the printer's operating in. So essentially, you have shielded it from all those drafts that may be coming from an open and closed door, air conditioning, turning off and on, ceiling fans, you name it. So you're gonna protect that environment and also your bed heater is probably gonna to have to work a little less hard because all that heat is being contained within the enclosure. So that's another plus as well too. In addition to that, you're also containing all the VOCs and ultrafine particles because they're just staying inside this environment. And we'll talk a little bit later about how we can get those guys zapped out of the enclosure and away from your lungs. So the other thing that's worthy of note is if you have little kids or like I have, three cats, they always wind up where they don't belong. So if you have your 3D printer inside an enclosure, you're shielded from the paws and little fingers. Now enclosures don't have to cost a lot of money. This is one of the Wham Bam uh, hot box and I can show you on my other screen. And this doesn't go, I mean, $139, it's not super expensive and it has all the ports and plugs you can see here where you can plug things in. It's made of a uh, fire resistant nylon. So you have that going for you. The other, uh, if you want something that's a little bit bigger, this is good for 3D printers about the size of say an Ender 3 uh, or a Prusa. And there's a complete guide here showing you the printers that will fit inside of here. The larger one that they have, this is the Hotbox Mega. I also have one of these. I've used it successfully on my CR10s and even my TAS6. And there's a whole listing here of printers that it's compatible with and gives you the fine details on that. So. Very affordable options right there. So we just covered the Wham Bam enclosures. There's also the enclosures offered by Printed Solid. Uh, they offer what's called their next gen safety enclosures. I'll show them on screen here. And they have all kinds over here. These are using what's called ACM, aluminum composite material. So it's a thin pieces of aluminum with plastic in between. I have several of these and I have several of these CR10 style ones. And pro tip, the, I have a couple of the black ones, but boy, they're really hard to light up. So uh, white is definitely my preference when it comes to these. These have been excellent enclosures. Uh, I've got stuff mounted onto them. For example, my Raspberry Pi and other stuff. So I do like these a whole lot. These are very good enclosures. And every now and then you can catch them on sale. So uh, uh, definitely check that out, especially if you're gonna be looking to buy a bunch of them, I'd contact Print a Solid, see if you can work out any kind of bulk deal. Sometimes they do that. Okay, next up, these are the enclosures from the 3D Upfitter. And these guys, I mean, they're kind of the Cadillac of enclosures. They are not for the faint of heart. <laughs> they, they are not inexpensive one bit. Let me show them to you. Um, for example, let me go ahead and go into the Creality CR10 enclosures. And uh, there's a CR10. Now I can, already, I can already hear in the comment section, oh my God, they're charging as much for the enclosure as I'd probably pay for the 3D printer. And you have a reasonable argument, I, I get that. Now you can get various add-ins added to this. And by default, they have a six millimeter front and a three millimeter side. So that's the thickness of the acrylic that you're getting. Now, if you're trying to keep the price low, then that's gonna work okay, 330 bucks. 
Now, if you're a more of a pro user or if you're doing this as commercially, for example, you'd probably want to invest in the all six millimeter and that's definitely going to bring the price up a hundred bucks. So the reason I mention this is I'm not poo-pooing on their prices. They can charge whatever they want. They make a good product. I have some of their things here. For the hobbyist, I get it. It's expensive. It's a lot of money. You're probably better off maybe with the printed solid, which is a bit less money, or even the wham band, which is probably the cheapest and the best bang for the buck right there. Now, if you're, for example, doing 3D printing professionally, or if you know, you're a business, uh, it certainly makes more sense where you're buying a much more rugged, big enclosure. And uh, for all I know, your taxes, again, I, I'm not a CPA. I just pretend to play one on YouTube. You might be able to write this off in your taxes as an investment. So there you go. But the, um, the other thing I wanted to point out too, while I have their website up, is uh, they also offer, if, if you want to do custom enclosures, they, they have the ability to do that. But they also have, let me pop my screen back open here, uh, they do offer various ways to help mitigate the uh, ultrafine particles and uh, VOCs. And they offer this really nice carbon air filter, which I have on most of my enclosures. And uh, this works extremely well, and it just uses the carbon filter. Again, it's not HEPA, but still, it's, it's something. So if you're not into their enclosures, certainly check out the uh, 3D carbon filter that they offer that will work with most enclosures that you find in the market. Okay, this next section, I have all kinds of notes. Please forgive me. Um, but I want to talk about fire safety. This is something that we don't talk a lot about on a lot of the 3D printing channels that I follow. So here's a couple things I just want to cover. So researching this video, I went into all the electrical standards, the UL, CE, uh, ATSM, or others, European standard, North American standard, Asian standard. It's a rabbit hole that is over my head. So essentially, let's, let, let's have this chat. So we know that the 3D printers that you own and I own are probably not the most expensive machines in the world. We know that the electronics are probably not the same quality as the electronics that came inside, say, our oven, refrigerator, big screen TV, computers, stuff like that. So the best advice I have on these things is some best practices because we know that you, me, and others are going to have different levels of 3D printers. Um, some are going to be sub $500, some are going to be sub $1,000, whatever. So I just want to give you some ideas on some things um, and some attitudes that I have on these things. So let me go with this. First of all, and I'm going to use irony here <laughs> and humor. So you probably would not leave your oven running for 24 to 36 hours unattended. You wouldn't take off your friend's house and say, oh, I got a turkey cooking at 200 and some odd degrees. I'm gonna be back home in two days. No, you wouldn't do that. I mean, what happens to that? You know, you just, no, you would not do that. No one does that. Same thing with a clothes dryer. You wouldn't start your dryer and just say, hey, I'll be back in two days and come back and hope that everything's okay. And the same thing, for example, like with a toaster oven or a, you know the uh, air fryer or, or stuff like that. So. I just want us to be real. So when it comes to a 3D printer that we may have got for not a lot of money, um, we know the electronics are, eh, you know, they're probably good. But again, I just hate seeing people taking that risk because that print head is running at 425 degrees Fahrenheit and if it's running unattended and something bad happens, something bad can happen. Now, we've all seen videos of 3D printer fires. We've seen Video is where, for example, bed wires are caught fire because of low quality wire in the bed. We've seen all kinds of scenarios where really, really bad things happen. Now, I'm not gonna go down that road. But essentially, the big thing is, you know, try, when at all possible, not to leave your 3D printer running unattended. Try to have, I don't know, let's be smart about this. So for example, if you're gonna run that 3D printer and you're gonna go to work for eight or nine hours, go to the gym or stuff like that, leave some devices that can help if something bad goes wrong. So for example, there's a lot of inexpensive remote cameras you can get. There's a lot of inexpensive remote outlets you can get so that you can keep track of what's going on there and check in from time to time. And if there's something you don't like going on, boom, stop it. Now there's also things like Octoprint and there's also uh, Obico, which used to be the spaghetti detective. So that if you do have um, a Raspberry Pi with Octoprint controlling your print and Obico is one of the plugins. What it can do is if it sees something that's suspicious in your 3D print, it can alert you or it can either pause right there and, and, and cease to print uh, immediately for you. So there are some AI features out there that can help monitor your print and make sure that, hey, this doesn't look right. You know, let's, let's, let's let them know and have him make a decision 
uh, or it can it can stop it automatically for you. So that's that's the big thing: remote monitor, remote shutdown, uh, and those sort of things, just to keep you safe. Now let's talk about worst case scenario. Let's say you have a 3D print that has failed. Say the print has come off the bed, it's being bashed around by that hot end, and who knows what kind of plastic you're using. I don't know, let's go use ABS, PTG, whatever. But it's sticking to that hot end and probably starting to burn and do some bad things. What do you do? Well, let's just be prepared for the worst. Say that a fire does happen or a fire does start. What do you do? Well, if you're unattended, eh, not good. So there's a couple things out there that can make or try to make things better. So one of the first ones I'll talk about is called the cloud. And I have one sitting right here. And this is something that you would mount above the 3D printer. And what happens is that if this thing, um, well, if it, if it catches fire, there's a small charge inside and it will detonate the fire suppression material um, all on top of you know, the 3D printer and probably with good luck, try to put out that fire. So there's, there's, a, there's one of your first lines of defense right there. Now, uh, let me show you on the webpage right here. Um, Here's the cloud, and here's where it talks about exactly once activated, it'll make a brief explosion, launching a cloud of ABC extinguishing powder uh, into the air around the device. The powder quickly extinguishes the fire. So for 30 bucks, that's not a bad piece of insurance. And just want to mention that we do have a coupon code for Wham Bam Systems uh, down in the uh, description, so you could probably get this for a little bit of money off. The other option out there is called Blaze Cut. Now, Blaze Cut uses a pressurized tube, and it's it's a bit more expensive. Like I said, the the cloud came out, um, you know, after I had invested in several of the Blaze Cut tubes. But the way Blaze Cut works, they use these inside network closets. They even use them inside cars and vehicles. I've seen them used in funny cars too. Um, but essentially, it's a pressurized tube of fire suppression material. And what happens if a fire breaks out and it breaches that tube? Well, it suddenly released all that pressure and is now being blasted with about 400 psi. Uh, of fire suppression. So there is another option. I have that on the top of several of my enclosures. Um, depending on where you get it, I think I paid about between 160, 170 for these guys. So I have to look around on the web to see what they are now. But again, a couple ways you can go. 30 bucks for the cloud, or you can spend a bit more and go with something like BlazeCut. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is ultrafine particles. What do we do with them? We know that 3D printers, you know, it used to be the thought was PLA is good, ABS is bad. And to a degree, that's okay. But the problem is that as 3D printing has become more popular and as there's been more research done, we're finding that, okay, that's true to an extent, but you know, PETG has a lot of issues as well too. PLA has various additives. You, know, you start adding fibers like carbon fiber or glass or other additives in there, and it gets a bit more complicated as to what is really good and what is really bad. Um, there's some interesting information from the CDC of all things, let me put that up on the screen here, where they talk about various uh, risk of additive manufacturing. And I will share links with this in the description. Uh, there are a couple of things that they mention with health and safety, what questions to ask. Uh, there's various approaches, for example, uh, you know, if you are a small user, mark, you know, makerspace, schools, libraries, small businesses, and uh, they have all this stuff here that has all this information as far as precautions, and I'm gonna scroll through here. Um, but yeah, it's very well laid out as far as pre-printing, printing, post-processing. Um, it, it goes really, really deep real quickly, and I just wanna cover this slide in particular. Um, so essentially, with fused filament, you know, we have FFF, FDM, or FLM. It feels like that's always a new abbreviation with 3D printing. Uh, the, the, the big thing we're talking about here is use ventilation. So if you have the ability where you live, you know, if you can open the window while you're 3D printing, that's great. Air, air changes per hour, that's, that's one way to do it. Uh, they're also talking about keep the nozzle clean so that you're not burning stuff on the nozzle. Heat the nozzle, then load filament. Well, that's, that's the way our 3D printers work anyway. Um, they're also mentioning, you know, print at the lowest recommended temperature. You know, I think this is IE instead of burning the material. Um, if the printer malfunctions, this makes sense too. Let it air out. Again, we want to get those particles out. So open the window, um, you know, crank up the air filtration device if that's plugged in. And the other thing that I think is really good is wait before opening a closed 3D printer. So if your print is completed, leave it alone for a little while. Let all that stuff settle out. If you have the uh, air filtration devices, let them do their work. And also, you know, they're talking things like eye protection. Um, this is particularly important because 
and I, you know, I have it here, you know, and I, I, I kind of chuckle, you know, with prints, for example, like with the Iron Man build and others, where you're dealing with a lot of supports, uh, sometimes getting those tree supports off can be, you know, quite a struggle depending on the nozzle size and, and the specs. So definitely safety glasses all around. Um, the other thing I want to talk about here too is, you know, they're talking about N95 respirators to avoid breathing in particles. So, you know, it's probably a good idea that if you're doing post-processing, and I know when we think post-processing, we think of just like, oh, we're going to be sanding our, or whatever. No, I, I think when you're breaking plastic and releasing particles is, is what they mean here. Um, and also, you know, again, be smart. If you're going to be working near the hot end, you want to have gloves. So, you know, if you work in a, like a lab environment like I do, you know, you're going to have things like work instructions or SOP, standard operating procedures that we use. But um, for you guys, you know, hobbyists and, and you know, other users, uh, certainly uh, there's some good information to be had here. And another slide here, and this is a bit more detailed, uh, health and safety Q&A. And again, there'll be links for all the stuff down below here. But there, we're talking about potential hazards, maybe breathing and skin contact with VOCs, and particles, um, printing considerations, you know, when possible, PLA rather than ABS. Um, be careful with filaments with additives and metals, nanofibers, carbon fibers, and all this. So um, the other thing that's mentioned here too, I think is very important is print in negatively pressured area. So essentially we wanna make sure that there's, uh, we're pulling air from outside the enclosure into it and uh, you know, nothing is coming out of the enclosure, you know, so we're making sure that we're pulling all that stuff out of the environment. Um, same thing here, you know, uh, some of the things just mentioned, I'm just leaving this up here for your, for your glancing here, but uh, um, lab coat overall, safety glass face shields. So I'm not trying to, my biggest point here is I'm not trying to be the killjoy. I'm not trying to be the guy that's like, oh, 3D printing was fun until you made me aware of how dangerous it could be. That's not my intention. <laughs> I just want to make sure, and as I end all my videos, is I want you to print safe. I want to make sure that you're not compromising your health, being exposed to all these after effects of 3D printing. Um, I mean, my true story, uh, two years ago, before I had these guys all enclosed, I was having a terrible issue with post-nasal drip, sore throat, couldn't figure it out, thought it was allergies, you know, went to the ear, nose, and throat doctor. No, everything looks okay. It's just, just you know, something's irritating you. So uh, it wasn't until I started putting these guys on in, in the enclosures and only printing in the enclosures uh, with the carbon air filter running, or I also have one of the expensive BOFA um, air filtration systems. Um, so when I started doing that, no more issues. Now I've also read of other people that they've used ASA, uh, which is a nice alternative to ABS. Uh, but in some situations, you know, people that didn't have them in enclosures or they didn't have any kind of filtration or enough air ventilation, they got ASA poisoning. So the biggest thing is, and the big takeaway, and I was hoping to be able to interview a, a toxicologist I follow on YouTube, and maybe we can do that in the future. But the big thing that we know is that the ultrafine particles and the VOCs that come off these 3D prints cause inflammation. And inflammation is everything from irritating your lungs, irritating asthma, uh, we're talking some of the precursors to heart disease and lung disease and other stuff. So I, I guess, and I, and I don't mean this to be too funny, but I don't want you guys getting a black lung <laughs> from 3D printing. Uh, I don't want you guys to be watching TV 20 years from now and some attorney, you know, TV commercial says, were you near a 3D printer? You may be eligible for the benefit benefits. Call us at 1-800-blah-blah-blah. So anyway, the big takeaway, I hope from at least this part of the video is that, you know, the honeymoon is over. You know, the idea that we can just let these things run open air and, and not have any kind of repercussions or dangers, um, no, <laughs> that's not the case. Uh, certainly make sure, you know, if, like I said, I live up here in a northern climate, so opening the window is not a great idea for me because it's, it's below zero out there. But for those of you that live in other environments, that might be something you can do. Uh, if you're like me and you're cooped up in a, in a shop down here, you definitely want to consider investing in the enclosures, um, devices that can mitigate and take care of those, you know, ultrafine particles and VOCs. Um, some other things that you can do, like what I do here in the shop, you know, I can't run the windows open, obviously, but I do have uh, two uh, Honeywell um, HEPA uh, air purifiers. And uh, fortunately, most of the particles that we're trying to capture are fairly big, so a HEPA filter will, will capture them. So. The big thing and the big takeaway is just make sure you're aware of the danger, do what you can to protect yourself, 
and please always print safe. So that's it for this time. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned a lot. I'm going to include all this information in the description. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say in the uh, comment section. I'm sure I'll get roasted. There's always those people that are, gonna, that are gonna say that, ah, we're all gonna die of something. Yeah, this is, nope. And I'm sure there's gonna be a fair amount of people that are gonna say, ha, CDC, where have you been? We just went through COVID. I, I don't wanna see anything from the CDC. I get it, I get it. Um, you can also find this information on the EPA too. So there's other sources if you don't wanna believe me. So if you wanna see what I'm up to and all my fun projects, check me out on Instagram. Facebook, X, and of course here on YouTube. That's it for this time. Please check out the affiliates down below. There's all kinds of coupon codes that can save you money and they help the channel out. So I thank you for checking that out. That's it for this time. And as I say to every video, please print safe.